Hello everybody, uh, welcome to this week where I wanted to talk about some of the news that's been going on in the creative world. Um, as you've probably heard, Adobe have decided to change their terms and conditions when it comes to what data they th think that they can have access to uh, in order to train things like uh, generative models and AI. And um, you know what? It's not a subject that we have actually talked about when it comes to Inkscape. Um, you, you know, I, I could actually talk about uh, if you are unhappy with Adobe, you could consider using Inkscape, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, but I, th I think you kind of get the model. If, if Inkscape is going to work for you, uh, you may have already tried it already. Otherwise, there's probably features that you're missing and, and that's fine too. Um, but I wanted to get more into the conceptual realm, the actual, like, not politics per se, but the um, philosophy, shall we say. So we've actually had discussions about uh, AI or generative mo mo models from uh, some users and some, some developers in Inkscape. Um, this is probably happening in all projects, to be honest. And the kind of conclusions that we're drawn to is that when it comes to vector images, uh, generative models aren't there yet. Um, the research isn't there. The uh, sophistication of the models isn't there. Um, the way in which vectors themselves are tokenized and represented in data isn't there. And all of these things have to be uh, constructed first in order for the uh, AI, generative, whatever, assuming that you think that these things will actually produce a good result, um, in order for those to be efficient and effective, all of that research and all of that, like all of that tooling would also need to be done. And Vector is a million, million miles away from where raster image editing is and where text generation is. Um, so that's the, the technical side. Inkscape will probably not have AI in it simply because there really isn't AI for vector imaging. Uh, there may be in the future. Okay, so let's talk about morality. One of the problems that keeps on cropping up when it comes to uh, model training is data and where to get it from. Um, look, it's about consent. It, it's, it's simply that straightforward. It's your data, your creations, your artwork. You're the person who should be asked for your consent if you explicitly want it to be involved in a model training program, right? No half assing no, we have rights to your data or we'd like to ask for some very furry, um, you know, generic perm permission. No, you should be asked for your explicit permission for your data to be included in training data sets. That's the thing that a lot of these proprietary tools are failing at. They simply do not think that your consent is necessary uh, or that your involvement is interesting, right, to the problem. Partially that's because getting consent would be difficult and possibly even expensive. In the Inkscape world, let's do a hypothetical. Imagine we had the technology to do vector AI generative model technologies, which we don't, but assuming that we did, uh, the way that we would have to approach it is literally artists would have to submit their data, their graphics to a training program with explicit consent involved, right? That, you know, it's effectively like making your artwork pu public domain. You know, there's no guarantee that the model wouldn't spit the same artwork out it probably wouldn't but there's no guarantees and of course you would be um, training the model to reproduce your style of artwork or a specific kind of artwork and that should be um, built into the way you ask for consent right because in a lot of ways you're not just asking for the copy of the work you're also asking for a lot of the information about like how things are constructed what kinds of color palettes are used, what kinds of styles are involved, and all of those things get sort of mixed together and generated again. And 
theoretically, there is a future where uh, an open source project might ask for data, but like it wouldn't be done with some terms and conditions nonsense. It would be a literal call out, be like, hey, guys, we built this new technology. Isn't it cool? Here is a web page where you can go and like submit your artwork to be digested into the machine or whatever. And the fact that you don't see that, that you don't see um, Inkscape, or I don't think I've seen Critter or Blender or GIMP or any of these other open source tools have programs where they're digesting AI model tra training data suggests that right now we're just not into building those mo mo models. Um, maybe the technology isn't there when it comes to things like vectors. Maybe there's just not enough pull uh, for the technology. Maybe it's not efficient enough. Um, but these are all considerations for the projects themselves to think about because it's, it's a lot. It's a lot of energy. It's a lot of time and effort to collect all that data. And specifically, it's a lot more energy to ask first but it's necessary and i would suggest that these proprietary uh, companies should maybe take a leaf out of the open source book and think about what it means to be a user and what it means for a user to have rights over their tools and over their data okay um hopefully this hasn't been rambly but i hope you get my point that ai not ready yet ai consent Simple as that. Okay, I'll see you next time.